This centre, like in that reference, refer to the core that you've sort of been talking about in your okay. in the that, clips. Okay, that's a different subject. Uh, although okay. we could say the centre of the centre is the core. Okay, okay. thank you. Uh, but it's a separate piece there. Okay. Uh, so I, I'm going to take the approach of, of core as if there's different dimensions of core. So let's say the first level of core, let's say is a physical plexus. So the Hatha Yoga people, the Pilates people, the bodybuilders, they all, they're hot on that word core. So if a bodybuilder starts to work with his core, he physically gets a little stronger. Okay, so yeah. that's a physical plexus. Uh, physical energies, say that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> now we want to continue uh, in a finer dimension. So we'll stay with that core, but a sense of it's a doorway to an inner finer. And the inner finer core, we'll have to maybe change the words, this energy plexus. Yeah. Okay. So through the physical core, inner finer sense to a finer core and it'll be more energy related. So when you start to play with that one, it should definitely be uh, much clearer that energies are pervading the body instead of just physical capabilities a la bodybuilder. There's energies there, but yeah. uh, but it gets a little clearer that it's finer energies. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I'm not sure what word I want to use for the next one, but something to steer people, I think, in the right direction. And, and uh, so I just made up a word, a pure core. So physical core or physical plexus, energy core, a little finer again, continuing inner, finer, dimensional. And for lack of words, I'm going to make up a word, pure core. Pure. And therefore, purer energies should start to pervade. When you start this, it should start to activate. Okay, and we'll leave off what the fourth one might be. But following those sensei's lineage, uh, there is a very original purity to your to your core. Yeah. Uh, see, your core and your identity. Uh, for me, are the are the same thing or overlay in the same place. So when you start yeah. to work core and open and core, uh, the sense of I should get a bit better. Or it's not my stupid I, but a little more of a okay, self. More, yeah. As you continue, a truer self. Uh, so yeah. self and, and core have a re relationship in there. So there is a very original pure self of of which there's some type of core there. Is that, is yeah. that sort of almost? So with the eye would move, would be sort of equal to that core as it moves along as you... The eye move. lets go of itself as a dumb eye. Yeah. I call him uh -huh. weird Bobby. Yeah. I got yeah. the word Bobby's dangerous. Easy. <laughs> and there's Bobby who's sort of acceptable, but not too bright. Easy. Robert eye. Easy. Uh, that eventually uh, should get us to uh, true self. And maybe a spiritual word would, would, would be a, a soul. Soul you. Yeah. Mm. Inferring in a, re a very original. But a, you're nicely lined up. I with the core. Then, everything's yeah. together. In balance. Yeah, yeah that's why Osensei said, don't go anywhere. It's here. Mm. Yeah. So he never liked this idea of going over there for spiritual. Don't go over there for spiritual. It's here, but it's dimensionally finer here. Okay. But people say, yeah. ooh, this is ugly and it hurts and, and, and it gets dirty. I'll go there to be spiritual. He never mm -hmm. liked that. Yeah. Because he liked this inner, inner, finer, to touch this finer and be here. That's kind of important. Yeah, yeah, Here and yeah. now, <laughs> be yeah. present, subtle and open. You see, we're working on that that 
here-ness. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not out there here. It's an inner, finer sense. I think that was one of the most important distinctions for me in all the quote-unquote spiritual training, meaning developing being, uh, was that everyone was talking about getting to some state of higher consciousness. Bob kept talking about getting here, and if it wasn't a good state of consciousness, getting here was the way to get to a better state, not leaving here with some idea of a better state. It seemed like one of the most important distinctions and one of the most distinct differences in my study with Bob. Uh -huh. there, there appears to be uh, an, a very, at the beginning of creation problem, as I understand it, where we were fully there, so at the beginning, but there was this drift into more awareness about and we lost our presence with the original set. Don't know why this happened, but we did it and we're still doing it. Uh, a little heavy on, well. on awareness and losing the experiential sense. Hmm. Jobs and politics. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so I was going to go someplace with those sensei on that. Uh, Oh, no. so we don't want to continue to major in just awareness about. Um, we've got to realize that, as a, a, for lack of words, a partner experience. Yeah. Aware, I experience. Experiencing, I am aware. And these days, it's more like people are, I'm aware, I understand, I got it. And they forgot the experience part. Experience, I am aware aware I experience trying to get more balanced uh, maybe uh, maybe true mind body harmony is a reference but we can't use that phrase because I think people think their mind is their eye I'm thinking this that's my mind and it's like I, I wouldn't I, I rarely say mind body harmony because I know people are going to screw up that phrase <laughs> <laughs> do I get lost here where are we yeah, Who's murmuring so I, in the background? I don't think we can get lost in the sense that we're just hanging out at the coffee shop, sort of. But uh, I'm, I'm also wondering, you know, I know that you came out of other arts. Do you want to, just, you know, unless someone has a more important question, and I'm sure any question might be, but I, I know you went to Japan to study karate and judo. Do you want to tell us how you got to Sensei? Well, I was a martial artist, so my intention was to study all the arts. I was going to be the top. Uh, uh, but I'm already studying. Before, while I'm doing martial arts, I'm also beginning to catch on to meditation, okay? and realizing there's something more and all of that. Uh, in a very, uh, how, does that, how does that come in for a martial artist? Nobody has one. Um, let, me, let me make a suggestion. If you're not speaking, oh my God, better that's who is that? You mute who is that Alan, you Alan, Alan, Are you Alan, Alan please here? mute your phone. Uh -huh. you don't want Could it? you mute your screen if you're not speaking and only open your microphone when you want to speak because we're getting a lot of background noise. So I was asking Bob, how did a tough guy, martial artist, cigarette smoker end up in yoga and meditation? I always had a sense there was something more. My sense as a teenager was if life is as I see it and that's it, fuck it. I don't give a shit about anything. There's got to be something more was my feeling. So I went searching to see if there in fact was something more. So that was the beginning of my quest. And, and what did you find? That there was something more. <laughs> <laughs> just, to sort of add on to that, I, one of the questions I sort of put through to Sensei Moon was um, the difference between your Aikido and your journey from 
uh, some of the clips on YouTube of 1990, there was a, a seminar to where you are now. You see, notice like in your dimensionality shifting, you see a, a notice a difference over the years and how you move, shift, oh, smoother, God, I'm faster. Probably, I'm probably the last one to know about that stuff. You'd have <laughs> to tell me, I, I don't. I yeah. Don't, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. You know, my sense of things is a bit clearer yeah. and uh, how it works is seems it looks good on paper okay i'm not perf performing yet at anything like an old sensei level uh but the map for me is seems to be getting clear so i'm sort of happy with the map i'm not as happy with the producing the beingness uh but i'm hope to catch up on that part now because i don't know how much longer i have <laughs> Uh, so, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know how I used to be really and how I, I knew I was you know, kind of good and physically good, but, uh, I don't remember. I don't know. Well, on the receiving end, it's not as painful as it used to be. <laughs> <laughs> There's hope. <laughs> Thank you. We used to um, sit with Bob a lot back in the old days. After class, we would go over to his house and sit. And a lot of times when we were in the coffee shop, there would just be moments where we'd just all be sitting there. And, and I would say sometimes those moments of silence deepen the uh, experience or the connection, or that's when the questions start to relevate, start to show up or something. So no need to fill in every moment. And at the same time, if you got a question, feel free. <clears throat> so Joel Riggs wants to know is, at this point, do you feel there's still much more for you to learn oh, about Osensei's process? Oh God, yes. Dear God. <laughs> Osensei, after he passed me, told me that he was uh, getting a clearer shot on things. Come on. <laughs> of course, <that> was. <laughs> Just for future reference, Kenneth, very hard to hear your question. So when you do come in close to the mic, maybe that's true for everybody. Sure. So that was uh, Joel's question, uh, asking if Bob thought there was still much more for him to learn about Osensei's process. And I said, hell yes. <laughs> Uh, it's a, it's pretty ongoing, the clarity and all that stuff. It's, uh, yeah. Well, again, I, if somebody says ahead. I got it all, I would <laughs> kind of question. I could say I got a good piece. <laughs> yeah. I kind of like my map at the moment, but no way am I going to say I got it all. Anyone that says I got it all. Uh, they got to be a walking Christ. <laughs> <laughs> and again, I would say one of the unique pieces was that what we've probably all come to understand is dimensionality, but the idea that you don't make the number one identity uh, into something special, there's a process by which the identity actually shows up, if you will, in another dimension. And um, I guess I'm wondering... Uh, did Osensei ever talk about a culmination of that process or I am the universe, is that the end of it or was there more yeah. after that? No, there's a, oh boy. I, I was, I wouldn't publicize this too much, but I was talking to him after he passed on, okay? But again, <laughs> me historically, that's not unusual. I've talked to a lot of dead people. Just something that came many years ago. So talking to dead people is no big deal. Uh, so after he passed on, he was still teaching. And, uh, and then he reached a point uh, where a uh, teaching in finer dimensions, where the dead people go and it's a little finer, the bodies don't hurt anymore. Uh, <laughs> 
where he wasn't sure for a while if he was going to come back again, if you're into reincarnation. And then he finally decided he was going to go home. Okay. Uh, so there is a finer, more original home place. I think we would call that Christ consciousness. That's the impression I got from him. Uh, so he ain't coming back no more. Okay. Uh, so I forget what the question is, but there is a, uh, a final, I, I think as I understand it, our trip in creation is to each individually experience something of creation, go all the way back home with all that experience and you're back to this very original pure place pure is not quite the right word but it's more original place where it's all cool okay so there is a reason for the journey and a reason to go back am i answering any questions or am i babbling <laughs> I don't, i'm not sure yet in the sense that i i feel like you're going somewhere with it so i just say keep going <laughs> keep going where See, if we go too far, we're going to lose everybody. Okay. Oh, there's an original perfection and we're all going to head there. Uh, yeah, but also let's keep it practical because we're, we're, we're also peopleized. Uh, get to a better level and you'll function a bit better. And you ought to be a little, feel a little better about yourself and producing a bit better. Uh, and keep working on that. Okay. Uh, to think about, I want to go back to my original home and be one with original God. Okay, but it might throw you off a bit if you overdo that and lose hearness. Mm -hmm. Oh, Sensei was cool because he was able to operate, be present in a very fine dimension, inner. And where that fine dimension, inner, he could stand in it, so it was present here in this heavy, bitchy world. And he wasn't standing as a heavy, bitchy guy. He was standing when he was O-sensei, in this very fine level, in this heavy place. So we would come at him with this heavy stuff, and he would be in this fine, harmonious place. We couldn't touch him, and all this magic would happen. Uh, but he also said, this is available for everybody. It's not just me. Or somebody. Okay. And unfortunately he said, it's so easy. <laughs> easy. <laughs> Whose voice is that? <laughs> Female voice. Yeah, I see. <laughs> Ooh, that one. Who is that? Me. It's me. Oh, Nikki. Oh, who, who, me? Uh, that one. <laughs> Nicola, oh, okay. uh, if you want to speak, speak, but don't just come around the background. You throw us off. So the floor is yours. He said, O oh, Sensei said that it was so easy to you, but drove me crazy. Did, did, did he did he give you any inkling of? how to how to get to where he was <laughs> he, he, okay here's how i understand it oh sensei was an alchemist okay and the rules of alchemy seem to be they do not spoon feed <laughs> they'll it's like it's part of their creed not to do that uh, one guess might be if they spoon feed and you catch on to some great power and screw it up, they're like responsible. That's my guess. You have an experience, you practice, and then you come to him with a question. And then he would feel that and give you a little tip for next. But he's not going to lay out a bunch of stuff a certain way. And if you ask outlandish, heavenly questions, 
I think he would be a little annoyed. Uh, they don't operate that way. It's you experience and then you ask the teacher, uh, okay, this is my experience so far now. Can you help me with where I am and what's next? And they can help you a bit, seems to be their philosophy. Uh, so he didn't go in a certain way out of his way. I hate to say that because I picked up so much from him. But it was still a journey I had to take. Nado, okay. He'd say very with much feeling, Nado, I want to give it to you, but I can't. You have to catch, I forget the word he used. It's like a trick. It's not quite the right word, but you have to catch something. You have to catch it. I want to give it to you, but I can't. Um, it was very heartfelt when you say that once or twice. Very heartfelt. Do you get a feeling for this? Yeah. 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 You do something. You work on it. We'll try to help, but you work on it. Okay. If anything, I probably spoon feed too much or talk too much or something. Maybe. Oh, okay, so I have a question then. So, you know, when you, um, you, if I'm in a uncomfortable situation and I'm feeling a little bit out of my depth and there's a bit of nervousness and restlessness that's happened and I recognize that, that, that there's some energy there that's a little bit too overwhelming, is it possible? Can you actually categorize those energies and put the more overwhelming ones to sort of like one side to deal with at another time? You could. If you don't have time to do a little process in the middle of this situation, that's one way of doing it. Yeah. Where you go home and you're alone now and you say, okay, in that same situation, here come those same energies, and then you practice that way. You could do it that way. Right. I guess I would say do the best you can under the circumstances when you're in the situation. Yeah. <coughs> uh, I mean, more than once, I'm sure I've gone home saying, oh, shit, I didn't handle that well. Meaning I wasn't properly open with those energies that were there. Happens a lot, and I think it's the norm. But we should do something after to, so it doesn't happen again and again. Do the best we can. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thanks. Mm. A question from Steve in Melbourne. Um, Bob, um, in describing Osete uh, and his process, uh, in the dojo, did you experience him in the same sense when he was uh, uh, off the mat, as it were? The man, um, I gather, is was the same man on the mat and off the mat. Uh, yeah. Uh, if we're at his house and his wife is there making tea or whatever, uh, he'd be the husband. Uh -huh. You know, he didn't have to be oh, sensei in the dojo. So he, uh -huh. he didn't have that same flavor. And when he was, when I asked a deep question, uh, which I would ask him whatever, every few months or something, I'd have an important question and I'd ask, and he'd go to a very deep place and answer or guide me. And his flavor then was different. Uh, so we had these different flavors. Mm. Yeah. So he was yeah. mixed. Uh, one time he walked by me in the in the dojo. I was washing up, and he walked by from his house into the dojo and I said, oh my God, is he mad? Is he angry? Because I was just, wow. <laughs> and after a moment I said, that's not angry. What the hell is that? It was just so powerful. And I 
go out to the dojo and I say to my buddy, who's a Zuke, I say, what's up? And my Japanese buddy says, a, a warrior is visiting. So since I was going into warrior mode, why? Because they think he might have to contend with that guy. I don't know, but he was like, wham. Yeah. Scary. Just this wham. <laughs> uh, so that was one aspect. Yeah. Uh, another day he called me into the office. He's in a jovial mood. And he says, well, make a fist, don't move. And he, from far away, moved his hands in my arm and went, wow. <laughs> yeah. And he thought that was so funny. I said, Sensei, do it again. I ain't moving this old man. Wah. Moves his hands. Wah. But he, he's tickled. He thinks that's so much fun. He was many things. He didn't hold the same set all the time. <laughs> yeah. Well, Thank you. Mm. Yeah. So, Chris here again from uh, Rotorua, New Zealand. Um, a couple of the clips recently coming out from the camp you had were talking about downtime. I think you briefly sort of talked a little bit about that in New Zealand before on your last visit. It sort of didn't seem like the same sort of depth as it's just gone over. Ah, downtime is getting fascinating the more I get into it. Yeah. Okay. Ah, boy, where to start with downtime? Ah. Okay, there's a lot of little downtimes going on. We just don't happen to notice them. When you say, uh, gee, I don't know, give me a moment. That's downtime. And you hit a certain center or minor core. Oh, okay. Here's my answer to that question that I didn't know the answer a moment ago. That was downtime in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah. uh, give me five minutes on that problem because I don't really know. Ah, oh, 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 there's a downtime there. Okay. Boom. Then you come back feeling better with a better sense of the answer. Uh, let me sleep on that tonight. That's downtime. Okay. Yeah. I can't go any further, boss. I need the weekend off. I can't do another seven days. I need the weekend <laughs> off. That's downtime. And then you click and you revive. Then you can go another five days or maybe another week full time. Um, so downtimes are, I, I, my impression, are not really understood, but are very important. See this tree behind me? I think in the winter, it does a downtime so that in the spring, it can liven out again. It's a natural downtime for the plants. People mm. get sort of as if there shouldn't be any downtime. I should always be up and at them. Well, don't you inhale? Do you always exhale? Do you always stay awake? You don't. There is downtime. I think the problem is, I don't think downtime is truly understood, would be my, my guess. Uh, that it's part of the, how the creation beats. Okay. okay. Yeah. And, and to take advantage of how it beats and work with it. Boom. Downtime. Uh, a new, a finer finer downtime center is a doorway to a finer dimension where the finer energies go boom and now you're there for next whether it's an answer or a physical capability mm -hmm. i think we could take advantage of that law and utilize it more and more fully more properly instead of oh shit i'm pooping out but we're not taking advantage of it. We're not utilizing it. Uh, I, I think we can utilize it better if, if it works the way I, I'm sensing it works. And that's it's down into a central core doorway to a finer dimension where finer energies 
click out next. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Uh, I think we probably we probably do that often, but don't catch it or like you take yeah. it as you say. You, you take a moment, but we don't see the importance of it or the it could be more than what it was. Or when you are in trouble, yeah, if you could go back to that. But we don't. We sort of panic and yeah, I was do something silly. I was sitting on my front porch here and I was starting to mull on this downtime thing and. And they started to hit me with all these earlier ones that we don't recognize. I forget what they were now here mm. on the front porch, but there were numerous minor ones. They were obviously downtime. Once I begin to understand downtime, they were obviously the beginnings of downtime. And to recognize them and then take advantage of them. Uh, we're a little bit behind on that. Uh, we didn't have too much practice there. Uh, mm. Uh, I try sometimes to lay out some of the techniques as a downtime. I, I can't, you're holding on, Morote. I can't move you. Oh, I can't is a clue. Mm. It's sort of the end of my aliveness at this level. Downtime. So I find that certain words clue me in real fast. I can't. Yeah. What are you going to do? Try harder when your system said, that's it, man. I can't yeah. do anymore. And we as human beings try to do more. And then we get ripped like I am now. <laughs> huh? Instead of, oh, downtime. Boom. Yep. So my basic morote drop down, boom, is kind of based on that. Physical version of it. Mm. Thank you. So Sensei, this is Lauren. Can I ask if you can extend that? So you gave as your example, Morote Dori Kokyu, Kokyu Nage. So is hey, every, every Japanese <laughs> words there. Thank God for Lauren. Yes, Lauren. <laughs> your, your, your two hand grab that you showed just now. Yes. So the, down, the downtime, is that the same as the inhale, exhale of the Kokyu yeah. Nage, the breath throw? Yeah. That each one of them yeah. has a, Downtime inside it. Exhale is probably downtime. It's, it's bigger version. Boom. You see, the big version of the universe breathing is boom. Yeah. So the downtime is the same. Is is the the downtime is a uh, positive receptive. The receptive would be downtime in that sense, and the. In the coq uh, breath throw, the inhale exhale has a downtime to it. Isn't that seems to be where it's leading? Yeah, because uh, because this original in out of creation, <laughs> getting fancy here. This original <laughs> in the in the beginnings of creation, this original beat, as I understand it, the beginning of creation is like a beat. And it never stopped beating. So there's continually a downtime boom, a downtime boom throughout creation. Mm. Now, along the way, we pick that up and we notice it as breathing. Mm. <laughs> but it's still based, pretty sure, on that original beat. Mm. We get lost here. That's great. Yeah. Is that... Yes, thank you. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, one problem in mapping out or working with the creation, the universe, how it works, is we hit a certain level and then we tend to stop. It's, it's a good trick to, to uh, uh, say, stay with your pattern if it seems to be working but with a sense of what's next, what's finer, to get to that that's under that. So under me, breathing is a big breath. Anyone who's, who's sat with breath should know that. There's a bigger breath. After a while, you don't say, I'm breathing. You say, oh my God, I am being breathed. Breathed it. Yeah. Based on the whole damn creation is breathing. So it's a good trick. What 
careful of getting stuck short. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Steve, you're muted. Your microphone is muted, Steve West. Kenny? He's unmuted. Go. Go okay. ahead, Steve. Go ahead. Oh, good. Okay. Is there a way then, um, Sensei, to pay more attention to the receptive positive element that you've just uh, discussed a little in terms of that downtime process, the receptive positive, the, the paying attention to? I don't know whether that's the right uh, for me. question to ask. I'm not sure. I don't know. I think I use that a lot in the Aikido as, as kind of a first basic. Yeah. Uh, he moves. I'm receptive. He's more open. I'm positive. Uh -huh. I think I use that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, again, dimensionality. I'm receptive. I'm positive. After a bit, it's like, no, the whole situation has receptivity and positiveness so go dimensional with that once you kind of get a feeling of receptive positive at whatever level mm -hmm. then you might want to continue at a finer level or dimension where receptive positive is going on at that level yep okay see yep. Osente, i don't think said i draw them in he said i just stand here they're being drawn in See, where the hell is he standing that he just stands there and they're drawn in? He didn't <laughs> beg them to come in. He didn't plead with them. He didn't force them in. They were just drawn in. What level was he standing where they're just drawn in? And when they were drawn in, they were thrown out. Yeah. Whatever happened there. So, uh, hmm. so enjoy the level you're at, but maybe have a sense of eventually... What's next here? Staying on this lineage, lineage now is receptive positive. What's next? Or breathing, inhale, exhale. Okay, I'm inhaling, exhale pretty good because I can exhale 10 and inhale 10 and hold for the count of five or whatever. Yeah. Very good. What's next in the next dimension, the next finer? It's a good trick. Thank you. Can I suggest a question from somebody who hasn't spoken yet? <laughs> hey, Phil, are you trying to turn your audio on? Phil? Hey, what? Phil Booth? Phil know. Booth, we're asking if you're trying to turn your audio on. No, 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 no. <laughs> I've got two things running, and I was trying to figure out which one was which. All right, it's all under control. <laughs> Phil, ask a question, Phil. <laughs> uh, I actually don't have a question at the moment. <clears throat> it's okay, we'll wait. Uh, no. <laughs> oh, before I forget, Lauren is running for CAA president. Mm hmm. Go on the CAA website and vote for him for president. He, it's a good job for him. Okay? <laughs> Has to be done soon. soon. So make that little effort and do that for us, would you? Anybody who's a Don rank, so get your Don ranks to vote for Lauren. Er, H E R R. Lauren knows when to vote. Huh? Lauren knows when to vote, and you can ask. Good. Yes, so it's, uh, you can send in an absentee ballot until August 23rd. It has to be received by August 23rd. And it has to be downloaded. If you go to the CAA homepage, there's a link to the ballot. Um, statements both from me and from Craig Fife. And, um, uh, and then there's a ballot which you print out mark with a pen and send by the post that has to be received by August 23rd. And uh, 
uh, like Sensei said, please vote for me. <laughs> Good choice. Just send me a check, Lauren. <laughs> I'm supposed to send Moon a check. Okay. No, Moon owes me a check. <laughs> Richard? Uh, the, the, check is, the check is not in the mail. <laughs> Damn. The workshop wasn't as good as we thought. Yeah. That's what I said. If we get the money, it'll be fine. Bob and I did a really nice presentation uh, for a an internet company and uh, Kenneth came with us and uh, we basically showed him centering and then uh, Bob taught him some presentation skills, which worked out really good. And then um, we did, you know, for those of you who've been in the old energy workshops, we did the sit stand thing. And then I couldn't believe it, but he took him out into chanting. And I, I really thought, I really thought we were going to lose them there, but they came along pretty well. It was a, I think it was a good event. So we're still kind of waiting here from them, but uh, it, it was a fun afternoon. I really enjoyed it. And it was kind of fun to watch Bob do that, that old stuff in a way, because most of the time now he's been talking in these, um, like he said, we're going to lose people. We're getting fancy. We're whatever. And, uh, and I do hope and that somehow we can keep the fundamentals present uh really everything is based on that everything starts with that process of just centering into uh, whatever kind of day you're having and that's the doorway into from the 10 pounder to the 20 pounder squaring away to the 10 pounds not wishing you were at the 20 so anyway just relax bob i'll, I'll send it to you as soon as i get it okay <laughs> um so uh, what, 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 what? Quickly, so, what I did with the chanting, just for a minute there, because we're running out of time, but I had them individually make their personal sound. Hi. Hey. Come on around. Uh, had them make their personal sound, but I thought this is a company gathering. If we settle to the n another dimension, it's the company level. And then they all chanted together so I could hear a resonance where they could feel the resonance. They represent the company. Uh, we have somebody visiting through here. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Uh, anyway, it was fun just to touch on chanting for a bit. Hadn't done it for a while. Uh, seemed to work a bit. We'll see if they call us back. Hmm. Anyway, where are we? We were soliciting questions from New Zealand and Australia by people who have not yet spoken. Thank you. Patch is here. Bye, How about more uh, Fitzwater? Because I can see you God frozen just. in your headlights. Hello, hello. Look, it's Paul here from Perth, Western Australia. I may as well uh, jump in. I, I much prefer sitting back and listening. It's really, uh, I, I'm enjoying it thoroughly. Thank you very much. Is, um, it, is it winter where you are? Because you're all bundled up. <laughs> yes, it's not always 40 degrees. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's pretty cold. <laughs> okay. Look, I'm going through a process at the moment where I'm, I'm pulling off the layers of uh, physical and, and uh, force. And uh, I'm, I'm sort of, I'm not struggling, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Um, uh, like you, uh, I'm just wondering if that's a good indicator that I'm heading in the right direction. I had a, um, a Sanao Sensei in, in Japan who was very... Uh, positive actually he was really nice and, and encouraged me to follow the path i was going and uh that was really nice because a lot of sensei like you to do what they do um i chase you up because you're a man of interest and uh, i thoroughly enjoy uh, deciphering what you say and have to offer and it's uh it's very warmly welcomed thank you but <clears throat> i'm letting go letting go letting go and i'm feeling that's helping me does that um, resonate with you? Does it sound like it's the right direction, the right thing, the right way? 
Well, I think if I understand letting go, it's easy the eye. Right. And as one does that, then the finer energies that are part of you and part of the realm you're in. Okay. Uh, it's a two pieces here. Get to mix up better in relationship of harmony. So the eye is the screwer upper. A tight eye keeps personal energies from moving and keeps the energies of the realm you're in, the world you're in, the situation you're in, the universe you're in, from moving. So anything easy the eye or letting go can't hurt. Cool. Yeah, I'm finding it fun. Cool. Now, whether that feels good or not, I, I don't know how much I would use that. <laughs> uh, oh, look, there's always... How wrapped up I am in Bobby's eye or whatever. Yeah. To let go of that may hurt. Yeah. I'm trying to get past the physical realm is what I'm, I'm enjoying. So, yes. But there's always a sense of power to extend. But I'm always trying to just be like water. Mm. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Cool. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so I'm just not sure. Maybe I'm from the hard school. I, I'm not sure how how much happiness would clue me in that I'm doing right. Whereas, like, son of a bitch, what's going on? Tell them I'm doing wrong. I, I, I don't know. No, no, I don't go there. I, I always, I always um, for me personally, it's, it's uh, any issues are issues with me. Um, it's not the person oh, being... Course. There ain't nothing else. <laughs> you and that that makes you up. And the realm you're in that is part of that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I find uh, for me, other people are a mirror. They help me see the issues in me. It's not necessarily them being an a-hole. It's an issue in me that I have to polish. So that's the way I'm, where I'm coming from. So. Uh, this probably came from old sensei. Aite wakagami desu. Your partner's a mirror of yourself. Hmm. I'm not sure if it came from those sense, but I would surmise because one of his people mentioned it to me. Yeah, because uh, as you're walking on the path, you can wander off into little laneways and get a bit lost. So, yes, yes, yeah. No, yeah. I'm, yeah. One time I would ask those sense of questions at certain levels, not every day, but I would work on things and then have a question. I can't remember the question now, but I asked him about something and he said, Mama. Mama in Japanese is kind of like, yeah, come saw. And so I said, whoa, uh, okay, I won't get heavy into this thing that I was wondering about because those senses said, eh, mama. Is, is that kind of an answer? I'm enjoying it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let me let me just make a, a process comment here as we're coming up on an hour. I think Bob, mostly we just want to honor your uh, desire here in terms of how long we go on. I mean, we told people we might go sixty, we might go a little longer to maybe leave ninety minutes or something. But it's up to you when we finish. I think it's uh, as long as it's also having value for all of you who are participating and. Lauren, thank you for your facilitation help. Please continue to play that role. I think that uh, uh, we should ask for final questions. If uh, uh, people uh, on the other side of the world, I, mean, I have coffee with Bob every week, so uh, it's not for me to ask a question. It's really for you guys and gals to uh, ask uh, anything. But we should make it like, the last uh, one or two questions now. Henry here. I I've got a question, Bob. Obviously, everyone um, on this video link up has been doing Aikido for some time. How do we make Aikido relevant to the new generation of people and how do we get growth? Yeah. So changing time. Some of our old words don't seem to connect. Although I was happy when I, uh, when Richard and I, uh, and he was there, uh, did this business workshop 
because they did bring up they wanted to be more centered and stuff. And I thought, oh, well, maybe it's coming back again. Um, uh, but it is changing times and everyone around the world, I think, is asking, I think we're missing them. What should we be doing? So it may still be a, a question. Uh, one possibility is we at least hold a certain level of settling uh, so we can function better, a little bit of energy so we're a little more alive in what we do, uh, just to keep the fires burning until we can figure out where the hell it's going and how to make a bigger hit. It's not like the 70s and 80s. It was, man, I mean, you know, there'd be five people every night watching a class, some of whom would sign up. This was weekly. Yeah. I haven't seen five people watch a class in years. <laughs> so it's changing time. Uh, but let's keep the fires burning till we can figure it out. Don't, don't give up hope. Uh, uh, but just present something that is, to them, feasible. Uh, um, Mark, you there? Mark, Mark. Yeah. Oh. Your video. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, you got this group of older people, and they seem to be enjoying what you're doing. Simply, what are you presenting simply that, that they seem to be okay with? Oh. Uh, well, centering seems to be coming through at, at the moment. I had, had one of the students come up to me and it was, it was quite nice to see he had a, like his, his moment, he said, oh, it's all about center and center. So, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. And, and, and I guess with some of the older people, it's, uh, re reconnecting them to their bodies, uh, the people who haven't been, um, used to doing something active for a while, are suddenly re-enjoying finding the body again, something like that. Uh, that could be we're so into computers and shit. You people are, not me. Uh, that, that we lost contact with the body. So, so any little touch on using that as reference might, might help. But maybe we have to keep it simple for a bit until it opens up for us or we see where the hell it, it's going. Because there's a question around the world by a lot of Aikidos about we're missing them. So is, are there some basic, simple things that we can keep them going and and until we get a clearer shot on where the hell we're going? I don't know. Thank you. Yeah, Henry, I, I'd like to add here that I'm actually at uh, the uh, Aikido of Santa Cruz summer retreat with uh, Mary Heine and Linda Holtgren and a lot of other people. And at lunch today, this was the topic at lunch, right? And so, uh, uh, you know, we're all struggling to, f to figure out what's different now and where do we go next? Uh, and uh, perhaps, something that's happening is that uh, many people are not only losing touch with their body, but losing touch with reality because we live a mediated life. Right. And uh, I mean, here we are, you know, 24 of us on a video conference call, like it's nothing. Right. And, uh, uh, and so the people who are keeping the fires burning need to keep talking to each other to keep our mutual spirits up as a group, right? And so this sort of, you know, conference call is actually very useful, I think, for, uh, you know, you're telling me that in New Zealand, you're worried about the same thing I'm sitting in California thinking about too. And uh, yeah, so it was a similar topic at lunch today. Okay. Well, maybe, maybe on that note, and I, I do want to let anyone who has a question uh, ask it. I don't think we're in a rush to finish or anything at all. But, um, but I would ask you to think about, you know, if, if uh, indeed we do come down 
I come with Bob, if Bob comes down in February, maybe we want to think about doing this again late in the summer or, or uh, you know, early in the, well, it's our winter, I mean, uh, you know, October, November, December, doing another one of these calls. If you guys think this is worth doing, guys and yeah. gals, thank you. Steve from Melbourne. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is an opportunity that uh, um, seems like a, a, a great way of being able to um, continue um, our connection uh, to you, Sensei, and to, to hear other voices um, where it's difficult. Um, uh, Paul and I are in, in Australia. Paul's five hours <laughs> further west than I am. And uh, it takes us, you know... Um, uh, um, this this is a wonderful way of connecting uh, where otherwise we would not uh, have the opportunity to, to go and sit in a coffee shop with you, Bob, and and, um, and talk away at, at leisure. So I, I want to say thank you to everyone who's been involved in um, yeah. organising this, uh, this video link up today. Um, I never knew anything about Zoom until Kenneth um, sent me some stuff. And uh, here we are. Um, um, a screen full of, um, of, of familiar faces um, uh, from across the world. So thank you for that. Well, thank you. Sorry, sorry, with a question also, thank you for this opportunity. But the um, just a question for Sheehan, obviously, the, um, just watching a few of the clips from your oh, Sensei, you revisited a uh, seminar that Sensei Moon's been putting on. The, the partnering up, the left, the right, um, the he, ho, relevance and balancing which can we have a little bit of growth on that from you or working with that we always there's always a partner on this okay let's start simple so <laughs> left and left and yep. right helps me to find center center is someplace between my left and my right is a center Then, as I settle and open, there's a little bit bigger left side, right side, and that helps me to find a better, fuller center. More energies are on the move. My eye should by that time be opening a bit and more whatever allow. Ah, whatever. So left and right are just a trick to find center. Uh, where are we going here? Um, Sensei, you often talk about these as, as pairs, as partners. So left, right, up, down, in, out. Uh, okay, within this physical system, uh, this character, yes. uh, it would like to uh, develop. So certain things facilitate a development. If it's a tight eye, it's hard for this system to develop because there's no room for the energies to move fuller. Okay. So up and down represent for me at first the energies of this system. Okay. Left and right, same thing. If I have a small left and right, I have a, this center and a certain amount of eye. The easy, the left and right gets a little fuller. The center is better. The eye should be a little clearer. And the energies that are there are a little more alive. And on and on and on. Okay, where are we, Lauren? I think you're right on his question. Okay. Yeah. So it's... Uh, so it's yeah. a nice trick, nice trick to recognize the center and then sort of, I guess, part of the mapping process of moving, well, shifting, growing. Now, when we start getting into a partner or an uke, uh, at first, there's a better level of you. We should be working on that. A better level of you present in the situation with your partner. That's, that's another piece. There's you 
and there's a situation. Yes. Okay, got that? Yep. Uh, and as you get better with you, then the situation ought to uh, equalize or balance or be part of this. Uh, so there'll be a a, a, a a much bigger, finer, dimensional different left than right. Uh, partner moves in and your whole left side moves. Partner moves in, your whole right side moves. But now you're bringing in the situation because you are more centered, balanced, then the situation is starting to balance with you. Are we, are we okay? Yeah. yeah. So you just can't talk about left and right. We have to talk about what, where, where are we here? Are we talking about you personally? Or you okay. with an uke doing a technique? You in the okay. realm you're, you're in? Yeah. Uh, so we have to kind of know where you are. Okay. I guess it was in re um, reference to, I think, one of the clips was you doing a, um, a 10 car movement with a partner left and right, um, a step back, what you call it. Um, and it was, we, I guess we forget sometimes we just do the process, the left and right move, and don't think much of it. But the importance of why I think you referred to that movement is that they always did it before a class. And people f almost forgot why, or there was another reason why we're doing certain techniques or certain movements on a consistent basis but um i think that does help no that's that's good sort of reiterating that um yeah and a technique and with myself growing sort of looking for the next things to help sort of keep ticking things along and recognizing lefts and rights growing but i think it's Well, there are so many dimensions at play, and when we start, you know, we work in the most fundamental, we're certainly helping our beginners just begin to sense uh, where they can, but for those of us as we move along, we should know and be open to the subtler forces that are activated uh, at the coarser levels or something like that. So, uh, just, just a reminder that each of these things Bob's talking about are doorways into oh, good. the next level or a finer dimension. Let's go ahead and see if there are a couple last questions and then let's see what anybody needs before we close it up. Sensei, Joel here. Any word on the seminar next spring? Has it been set? Uh, as far as I know, they've picked a date. It's a little bit later, another week or so, than the last one. Uh, look on the site. It should be there. If it's not, it will be. Should should be there. Uh, and um, so it looks like we'll have another one. Um, but that's all the information that that I have. It the, the date should should be on the website. If not, I'll I'll double check with Amy, uh, San Francisco Amy, and. Uh, see what's up and I'll check with Richard, make sure he's put it on. Uh, but as far as I know, it's been set up. So I think it's a go. Good, thank you. Going twice. Are we good? Anybody, anything for closure before we do our little wrap up? Uh, yeah. Just, just a, a, is there, a, is there any date when you're coming to New Zealand, uh, did did it, did you hear or no? Yes, no. Well, Is there any um, date when you may be coming to New Zealand next? Uh, I hear something like Henry. No, it's Mark yeah. Fitzwater. You want, oh, you want Henry? Uh, Henry, date yeah, in February. Yeah. We're looking in February. We February. haven't decided on a date yet. No, no, I was trying to get a uh, venue three. We're trying to get a venue for three, three or four days. Okay. But so, it looks like February. So it looks like February, but it's up in the air what date. Yeah. And, uh, Richard Moon is coming with me. 
I need oh. somebody to carry my bag because I'm getting so dilapidated. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I'm thinking if we're looking at, at a February visit with Bob, uh, you know, halfway is late October, early November. If you all would like to, we could schedule another Zoom call as we get towards that time. Again, this was just an idea to let y'all have a little more touch with Bob. I think it's been quite good from my perception. I hope it has from yours. Anything before we wrap it up? Yeah, Danny here. Um, hi, Danny. Hi there. You you spoke earlier, um, Bob, about the um, beginning of creation and the, the drift to awareness about things. Um, how do we balance that within ourselves, subjectivity and objectivity? Uh, subjectivity I, and objectivity. I don't know what that means. Uh, you have to realize I'm really not quite smart. <laughs> I, so I don't know subjectivity and object. Well, I, sorry, I don't know what it means. Objective would be having the experience and objective would be kind of thinking about the experience. Having the experience, and thinking about it, thinking about it. Yeah, uh, Danny, this is Lauren. Um, my interjection is, you know, as a martial artist, we always deal with the objective reality of, you know, how the world works in the re in reality, yeah. physics. Things fall down. There's momentum. And you're, uh, you know, those are the world of objective reality or objective technique. And then as for subjective reality, what Bob is always telling us, Nado Sensei is always telling us is to easy the eye, to not put an object, a subjective filter or interpretation that it just gets in the way. And, and so I don't know that, you know, you would want to say as an Aikidoist that you are simultaneously having objective and subjective. Because what Nado Sensei is constantly telling us is uh, get the subjective, the I, the subject, out of the picture and, and feel the energies and uh, uh, feel your partner. Uh, I don't know. I mean, that's my first reaction to your question. Uh um, uh, uh, uh. So you're sitting there and you're having a sense of something, okay? Yep. Now, what is your experience of that thing that you are sensing? Would that include both of those words that you use? That both have a place? I sense something. Oh, it! I sense it's getting finer. Whatever you're doing, it's getting finer. Now, what's your experience of being present in a finer? So we can use both of them. Do we take turns there? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Do we um, confuse my idea about it as opposed to my experience in it with it? Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, um, Danny, I don't know. Does this fit in? Did Nado Sensei answer your question? Huh? I don't. Danny, Danny did Nado Sensei answer your question? He did, yes. Yeah. In, uh, <laughs> in 30 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> uh, what if. I don't know if this fits in. Let me, let me fire it off. Uh, so let's say I have an idea. I would like to stand better. Very nice. You're allowed to have a nice idea about standing better. Now its partner is the actual energies of standing. Actual energies of standing. Okay, 
So yes. not to think because you have the idea, you've done it already. You haven't. That's a piece of it. But the actual is the other piece of it or side of the coin. And to get more balance between these two, to work them together proper, properly. Am yeah. I saying this right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm working on something that Cynthia uh, was bugging me about. He said, now, though, you have a good imagination, but you don't realize how important it is. So now I got to figure out where the hell imagination, what level was he talking about with this wor word, imagination? Do you imagine something? And the whole activity of the universe activates in relation to that imagination. Is it a big form of my idea and my body energies? What I just did is that a bigger sense. So I'm I'm working on that. See what the hell does that really really mean? What level was he talking about? Is any of this making sense? It it is very much so. That's a great it kind of break point to say let's see if we can remember to pick up there on the call in october november and we'll let you work on it for a few months and bring us back to the end bob do you have anything you want to say in closing is there any last thoughts or ideas or probably start to i'm uh, fine i'm fine still got wine i got cigarettes i'm fine <laughs> 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 well, that's a one, you're in the no, chat. Cool. no, I'm just saying that I, I, I work on this stuff a lot. I'll continue to work. I'd like to get it clearer. I'm sorry when I don't have an answer, when I don't have a good enough experience. Uh, uh, see, I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> yeah. Uh, cool. I'm a believer of O Sensei. Not though it's so easy. I'm just so dumb. I haven't got the so easy of it. I'm working on it. I'm telling you, I'm working on it. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, I get that you'd, you'd we like can. to give it to us too, but you can't. We have to work with it, but what you give us is so, I, you know, I feel so fortunate to know you. And I guess. I, Speaking for everyone here, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I feel everyone who made the time to be with you feels that way. Thank you. Yes. We appreciate the time you've taken today, Sheehan. Thank you. Thank you. Richard, I think that's a really nice way to close it out. I would agree. If, uh, if we can, just on one level, it's hard to close it. On another level, I'd say it's been a good session. How many ice cream cones can you eat at once? And we'll come back and do it again after we had a little time to digest what we've been offered. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Hey, okay. Thank you.